This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still, Nalado sees the necessity, even if she doesn't like it. Yaraxia will almost certainly betray you, so be careful when you face her, yes? By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Kajiti rulers, not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her crimes, they swarm around her like flesh flies on dung. A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very well. Take Tharn and meet with Eurexia. In the meantime, we will rebuild what remains of the militia. She marched into Anequina with a mercenary army and conquered Rimen. Her forces killed the royal family and she illegally proclaimed herself queen. That makes her a usurper. I pray I live to see her pay for her crimes. I'm hearing troubling rumors about Ashen Scar. On bed, mainly. I guess I can mark visiting there off my list. Ah, yes. The stories of an undead plague there makes this one's fur stand on end. Will we be seeing throngs of undead marching out of their next Cease! You haven't heard that a necromancer is trying to stop the undead. Hmm. I would not be surprised if you had not.
Hadi bir. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes, but peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimmon is far tighter than it appears. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimmon workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti workers worse than slaves. It's that building over there. For most of Rimmon's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. The Rimin Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimmon Marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets. Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls. When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimmon will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimmon, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, 
she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of women. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Come, Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Froom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The betrayer saw you when it looked through the soul-shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark night that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now about the rest of my body, O oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Thorn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half-brother. Your arrival, it's so... unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen is... Hush, Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Oh, how precious. I hoped my pompous half-brother would provide an amusement, but this is even better. I have a chamber set aside in the dungeons just for you. We'll play the most interesting games, you and I, until your body gives out. Do not presume to lecture me. I make the rules here, not you or Abner. I have a special relationship with Mulan Mir, an understanding, 
The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my half-brother can do to stop them. Enough! Zumog Foom, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. So we wound up down here, in the palace sewer. We heard two things of note. First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold. My age is finally catching up with me. Thank you so much for poking that open wound. Magic takes a toll on the body. I've been wielding powerful forces since before you were born. There's always a cost. You'd do well to remember that. Eventually. Quicker if you stop badgering me about it. My strength will return. It always does. Now get us out of this sewer so we can warn both Desert Wind and Riverhold. The way out, finally. I can't abide another moment in this stench.
Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adatorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted, well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Re. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adaptorium. Adaptoriums serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts follow the order of Jean Kaj. It's west of here, on the northern lip of the Scar. Look for a side entrance if the main door is blocked. Asura, is this truly the path you set me on?
the gates. Let no Euraxian enter this holy place. Invaders! This one will not allow you to enter this holy place. You do not look like one of the Usurper Queen's soldiers. Who are you? The Speaker of the Main sent you? This one expected we were on our own, what with the dragons and the battles to the north. Zamarak came down here to seal this path, 
But now he thinks the Euraxians seek the Grand Adept. Desert Wind holds many Kajiti secrets, and the keeper of those secrets is the Grand Adept. If you truly want to help, follow Zamarak to the Grand Adept's chambers. Nine Winds, no! Get to the door! Go! Save the Grand Adept! Zamarak cannot hold this for long. Go! This one will find another way inside. You are too late. The Grand Admiral, you will fall like wheat before a blade. Take my soul! Zumog Foom! This is the necromancer's doing. Even in death, I continue to serve. He called it a blessing. Said it would protect me. Damn him! He claimed my soul! Please, you must help me. Release me from this... Curse! We came for an ancient secret, protected by the Grand Adept. She put up a good fight, I'll give her that. Zumog Foom seeks the location of the Betrayer's body parts. I learned where the dismembered corpse was hidden. Now, please, help me! to me what the battle mage knew in life she whispers to me in death soon riverhold will fall and the betrayer will be restored let the fourth wind open the way grand adept no zamarak has failed this one was too slow Again. What has happened here? Who killed the Grand Adept? Zamarak thanks you for avenging the Grand Adept. But why did they attack this peaceful Adeptorium? Why kill a harmless old student of the Desert Winds? 
The usurper queen made a mistake when she had the Grand Adept killed. Whatever they came to find had an unintended consequence. It has roused the students of the Desert Winds. Zamarak pledges the Adepts to Garashri's cause. Euraxia will fall. We are not many, but we are strong. The Adepts of the Desert Wind will aid the city. Zamarak will see you there. After he makes sure the Grand Adept receives the proper blessings. Bother. I informed Garesh Ri and Kamira about what happened in Rimen. They're mobilizing our remaining forces even as we speak. Now tell me, what did you learn at the Desert Wind Adaptorium? I often wondered who Cadwell was before he became a soul shriven. I know the tales of the betrayer, but I never equated the two. The Cadwell we know is so... not that. We'll deal with Zumog Foom after we save Riverhold. Anything else to report? Well, that's a bit of welcome news. Many of the adepts have remarkable martial skills that we could surely make use of. 
Speaking of which, are you ready to help defend the city? For now, recover your strength and prepare yourself. Euraxia's forces will arrive soon and will need you ready for the battle to come. And here, take this. Garish Re keeps handing me pouches, but I have little use for Khajiiti gold. Multiple Cadwells, necromancers, dragons, and now Euraxian soldiers marching on Riverhold. This day just keeps getting better and better. Regardless, there's much to do and not a lot of time to do it. Yes, but Garish Re's scouts report that they're on their way. Our parley seems to have aroused Euraxia's anger. What remains of Elsewhere's militia has taken up positions around town, but I fear they are too few in number. They need your help. Garish Re has placed the defense of the city in Kamira's hands. She moves the Desert Wind Adepts, every volunteer she could muster, and what remains of the militia like pieces on a game board. Report to her, and she'll give you your orders. Find Chimera outside and see what she requires. Euraxian soldiers will soon reach Riverhold. When that happens, all oblivion will break loose. You must have taken a more serious beating than I thought at Desert Wind. Oh, very well. After I inadvertently had some small part in releasing the dragons from the halls of Colossus, I came to elsewhere to find a way to rectify the situation. So your memory isn't totally addled? Yes. But we discovered that the Khajiit had more to deal with than just the dragons. 